You guys, welcome, welcome. It's C2E2 2019. It is Saturday. And guess what? We're ready to kick it off, right? Anybody here like Clueless? One more time. Anybody here like Clueless? Please welcome to the stage, Brecken Meyer. Come on out, Brecken. Don't be shy. Where do we sit? You, you know what? You can sit. Who wants to sit by me? That's the real question. I'll Nisha, do it. you want to sit by me? Yeah, you, yeah, you, no, you, no, 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 you, 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 you. Okay, I'll do it. No, 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 no. I feel weird. You go ahead. I'm going to sit right here. You just walked to the end of that runway, Brecken. <laughs> um, first of all, Chicago, are you guys excited? I this... know what you're thinking. This is a reunion long in the making. I mean, I literally can't believe it. The film came out about 24 years ago, and here we are celebrating Clueless. Congratulations to you guys. Thank you. Alicia, congratulations to you. Cher is one of the most optimistic characters that I've ever seen on screen, and she's, she just has this way about her, a laissez-faire attitude, yet she's very morally uh, right, you know, all the time and very optimistic. How did you create that character? I thought, at first, when I read the script, I thought she was really materialistic and annoying and funny, but then I realized she really loved her dad and that, you know, to try and bring all the heart to it and make all the things that I didn't like lovable. Do you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, it's interesting because when you may, maybe when you first read Amy Heckerling's script, it, you know, it's kind of an interesting way of using dialogue, you know, a lot of Valley slang, a lot of Los Angeles, you know, youth slang. Yeah. And so I can understand how it wouldn't just jump off the page. Well, it did. Sh I should say her script was brilliant and I laughed of the whole way through it and it was very funny. But just as an actor looking at it, I was like, you know, I, I had one green t-shirt and a pair of jeans that I wore every single day. <laughs> so I didn't understand why someone would care about their clothes. You know what I mean? I was just wasn't like that. So um, I, I, I had to take the judgment out and then find the love for her and everything that she did. You know? But I mean, it was on the, it was, it's, it's Emma. It's, it's, it's right, um, I mean, and, and Jane that's, Austen. it's possibly like the most interesting adaptation ever yeah, of a I, classic, yes. you know? It's, yes. it's amazing when you think about that it is, you know, Jane Austen, yeah. basically. Um, Donald? Hey. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I'm... Donald! You flatter me. I am not afraid to say <laughs> that Murray was like, uh, aside from Cher, my favorite character in the film. That's what's up. You, that is what's up. You are amazing. And he sort of has this like all or nothing attitude. Um, and just this like, again, this sense of optimism and everything's going to be okay. And when you first read the script, what were your initial impressions? Uh, it was something that I really, really wanted to do. Uh, like a lot of people in here, I grew up in an inner city. And movies about the inner city didn't end like, the, like, like Clueless did. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, I was a huge fan. <laughs> keep it 100. <laughs> Just keeping it 100. Uh, I was Cl a huge fan. Share, fit. Josh. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> you know, in, in, well, yeah. hey, you know. You know. Just keeping it real. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I love that scene where you're shaving your head and you're like, yeah. "Cause I'm keeping it real. I'm yeah. keeping it real." And yeah. Oh my God, my favorite thing about that was when Donald I'm supposed to be answering questions. I know, dog. I know it's cool, but <laughs> what I know, is I get going it. on here, dude? I was in Garfield. Um, I don't so, know. Now. Here's the thing. No doubt. When, when my bad. My bad. My bad. Let me sit back. So when he was, when Donald. Sh now we were all we were 20, 19. Donald in the scene where they shave his head. So he shaved his head. 
but he had to film the rest of the movie and Murray wears a hat. So they kept the sides uh, there. Uh, and so no hair up here. So he was George Jefferson. George Jefferson. He was George Jefferson. And young kids Google George Jefferson. And you'll see. So if you don't know who George Jefferson is, yeah. you real young. Anyway. <laughs> so anyway, I apologize. Go ahead. Anyway, so you know, I want, and I was a huge fan of uh, you know John Hughes movies and of Amy Heckerling's Fast Time at Ridgemont High. And so when I read the script. I was like, wow, this will be my opportunity to be in something that I, you know, in a genre that I really, really enjoyed. And so, uh, yeah, I, it, it was a no-brainer. Well, tell me about the braces, because I, <laughs> <laughs> I did read something interesting, but I want to I go to the source. So the braces were fake. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess I had some really messed up teeth <laughs> when, uh, I guess so. They were, like, really tiny. They're, they're brand new now, but, you know. <laughs> They look good. Uh, now they're amazing. Now they're, you know. Now they're just like Hillary I got the, Duff. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what? I mean that in a good way. Okay. I love Hillary Duff. And you know, I'm, this is all going to be on the internet somewhere. And I love you. Okay. I'm just going to put it out. There's Hillary Duff. <laughs> right. And you. That's all I have space for. That's it. I accept. Yeah. I accept Aww. that. I receive well, it too. This is sudden, but. Oh! oh. No! <laughs> Brecken, don't you do this in front of everybody? I just, you complete me. <laughs> There's nothing in there. There's nothing in there. <laughs> Brecken, yeah. let's let's talk to you about about Travis. You you know you are the perfect like again optimistic but perfect. Sure was. Classic '90s stoner here. Yeah. How much of a stretch was that for you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. I can't see if there are youngins in here, so if they are, earmuff them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I had never been high. I had never <laughs> smoked weed or anything like that when I did Travis. So I was just like, well, I'll steal from Spicoli, from Sean Penn in Fast Times, and I'll steal from Keanu Reeves in everything. <laughs> and so there was this, because Bill and Ted's was like amazing for me. And him in Parenthood, there was a move he did in Parenthood where he would always go, at the end of it, he'd punctuate every sentence with like, okay, yeah. like that. Oh, and I was just like, that's mine. And so, <laughs> Put that uh, in my pocket. That, I mean, you can totally, in fact, when you were just doing that, I can see you yeah. doing like the tardy speech and like, yeah. you know, <laughs> that, which was genius. Yeah. Love it. How much uh, on camera sort of freedom did you guys have? I mean, I imagine it was a pretty tightly locked down script. Well, I, I wrote, I'm keeping it real. I just want to make sure that that's well known that I didn't get paid for it either. I'm just going to be honest with y'all. I mean, I got paid to be in the movie, but keeping it real came from me, y'all. You're welcome. Yeah. Because before that, nobody had ever said keeping it real. No, they had, but you know, you know, I jacked it from people from my neighborhood. No, I get and, it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you know. you're keeping because you're keeping it real. Because I'm keeping it real, you're right? Keeping now. it real. There was, now it's uh, keeping it 100, but I want to go back to keeping it real. I understand. <laughs> there was a scene, Alicia and I, when I delivered the bong to her, and she said, I'll put this in kitchenware, and I said, that's where I used to keep it. That was just a riff with Amy and I off oh. camera, and she was like, say it, it'll be funny. And it's funny when you do those riffs and then people repeat it back, you're like, oh, it actually worked, that's pretty cool. That's amazing. Oh. Alicia, this is like a ton of pressure for you. You were, you know, filming, I imagine, every day, almost every scene. Um, how, how was that for you as a young actress? Well, I was very young at the time, and I had done like eight movies before that back to back, so I was really tired on set. <laughs> And um, and so yeah, I was. It was just you know, I think I was 17. You were real young, yeah. You were a baby. You were a baby. And she had I, a bib on, <laughs> and, a, and a diaper. My dog was there. My rescue Samson. dog was there every day. Which Paul took a picture of Samson at the trailers and gave it to me at the end, which was oh, that's sweet. sweet. But um, so he kept me comfort. But like mostly, I was. Um, just, I was in every single scene, so these guys would come in and clown around and have so much fun, and I hated them we for that. We call it, a <laughs> <laughs> technically we called it acting. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know, when you guys weren't on camera, I was like, they're having so much fun, ugh. <laughs> like, why are they having so much fun? Because it was just work. Well, they were fresh, yeah. Well, yeah. you mentioned Paul, <laughs> and we have one more guest coming on stage. Please welcome oh, Paul no, Ryan! No, no. Hi! 
Welcome. Oh. Hey, man. Hi, hey, Brecken. Hi. I'm so sorry that I'm late. How do you sit here. Yeah, you get the middle seat because you're late. You get you know, no back. Uh, you get no back, so you sit yeah. here. Just don't lean back. <laughs> yeah. You guys, now, now we, we have the cast of Clueless. <laughs> you know, Paul there's good. there's only eight letters in my name. You'd think it wouldn't take me so long to sign those things. I'm I'm apologize. How? Yeah. Well, this is your first Comic Con, but right? Dude, yeah, ever? first one, first one no. I've ever I've ever done. <laughs> dude, and and now I mean, and also you get the small chair. Because you're Ant Man. Uh, you, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I, guys, he really did. Yes, he really did. Sorry. Oh. So, Paul, yeah. welcome. Um, we've been talking about. Paul's fucking Ant Man. I feel like I'm sitting on an ottoman. Right. Yeah, it is. It's the coolest <laughs> thing ever. It's fine. You, it's fine. you know what? Here, you want me to sit there? I'll sit there. Go. You can sit. You can sit by Alicia. You guys look good together, yeah. right? I didn't mean to give you like. It's like the equivalent of riding bitch. It's you didn't have to do that. I'm like I could I could sit in the middle. I like, I like riding. I bitch. like to believe this is how it would be oh, I'm nowadays. Good, I'm, good. I'm good. You guys would still be together. I like to believe that. I think I think yeah. so. I think you guys would still be together if we were to ever do a sequel to. <laughs> They would say, you guys are still together? Wow. And you're still kind of related? I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's interesting is I read that Amy Heckerling's grandparents were stepbrother and sister. And that's where she sort of got the idea for the relationship. Really? Yeah. Did you know that? Nope. <laughs> you guys know that? No. That's a little weird. You guys were the, sex right. you guys were the sexiest, sexy siblings hooking up. <laughs> Uh, life imitates art and art and imitates life. That's right. Um, in a movie filled with fashion, known for obviously these, these iconic outfits, uh, you got a little left out of that. You, <laughs> you were rolling around in t-shirts and jeans. Right. What was, what was it like to sort of be the, the slightly older, um, slightly removed character in the film? I felt, uh, yeah, I felt a little bit like... You know in Dazed and Confused, Matthew McConaughey is older than the rest of the crowd. <laughs> but he still kind of hangs out with the gang. And I, feel, I felt a little bit like that. Um, but I, that was honestly one of the scenes that was, was really fun was that wedding scene because everyone it, it was there. And, uh, and it felt like, oh, there's the, yeah, yeah, you guys have been filming all of your scenes at school and I'm just hanging out with Dan Hedaya in the dining room. And, <laughs> Who's great, by the way? But it was like, oh yeah, you all, you all having so much fun. I was a little bit on the, on the outside, and but it was. I mean, I loved working with Alicia and 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 these guys. You know, we we even lived together, as you said, like for a, a little bit right yeah. after the movie, because uh, I. Uh, oh, that's I, amazing. Yeah. And um, uh, it was it was a it was a blast the whole thing. And as far as the clothes, half of them were my own because I actually. They blew I the wardrobe budget. I actually that was my own amnesty T-shirt. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> My own KU hat, which, which they, which they lost, by the way, after that. Yeah, I had that hat for. And years. that was your own Nickelback little goatee. That was my real goatee. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was not make. I grew that myself. That's amazing. Well, if I understand correctly, they it was quite a long, you know, road for the project to get to the screen, and also kind of casting process. So once you guys all finally met and sat down together for the first table read, what was? Did you realize sort of the magic of the movie then? Or what was the what was the vibe in the room? I don't remember table reading. I don't read. remember the table read either. I do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> what? You do. So what happened? Tell us. <laughs> you guys don't remember the table no. read? No, I don't think we had one. Do you remember? We were all. It was at. Um, it was like we were sitting around in like a big square, and I, I want to say it was. I think it might have been. At a studio, it might have been. You're thinking a, about rehearsal. I would at think Paramount? it was at Paramount, but afterwards, we we're, were all around, and we didn't really know each other at all. But there was a bar, uh, restaurant, kind of like a bar a restaurant. It was a bar, <laughs> and um, around the corner that I used to go to, and I was so like, "Well, you guys, let's all go get something to eat and have a drink." And we all went together. It was uh, it was at oh, St. Nick's. <laughs> It was, yeah, it was at, uh, it was like over like La Cienega and 3rd Street. Oh, I 
know exactly what you're talking about. Wait. Do you, uh -huh. and we, what we all, and I remember, because I'd been there, and they just kind of like let us all in, I was like, oh, I don't think half the people here can actually be in a bar. No, <laughs> oh, I couldn't, no. No. I, I, my 21st no, right. birthday, you guys might not remember this, but the three of you took me out for my 21st birthday. Do you remember that? I was there? I, all three of, yes, <laughs> you were there, yes, <laughs> yes. Do you remember making the film? Yeah. <laughs> She has most of the 90s blocked out. Tell, so. tell us more about the birthday. Tell us more, Donald. Uh, we ran into Johnny from the Karate Kid that night. William Zabka. Um, and we went to Jones on 3rd for a hot second. You don't remember this. You don't remember this. this I tell the story everywhere I go, and you don't remember this. Can you give me some more? Give me some more. Wait a minute. Um, we ran into Billy Zabka that night? Yeah, I, we might. Karate Kid, bad guy from yeah, Karate Kid? Yeah, yeah. He, he was here. Yeah. When? I saw him yesterday. Was he like, I ran into you at Jones on 3rd, don't you remember? I said, I don't know if you, I, years ago, I met you, I talked to you for a while, it was at a bar, we're like, where, he goes, it was at Jones, neither one of us could remember the circumstances. I am putting it together for you It was you your now. birthday. It was How my birthday. Know? Dude, yes. Even making connections on your birthday for people. Bam. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Is he still here? Yeah. I hope so. Oh, yeah. I do, too. <laughs> I mean, he might not be here. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he is. If you are here, who knows? Up, say, hey. No, okay. So, we, yeah, none of us knew each other. I knew Brittany. Brittany and I had played boyfriend and girlfriend and other stuff. So I knew Britt, but I didn't know, and we didn't know anybody. Donald and I became buddies pretty quick, and now subsequently can't stop working together. And, uh, <laughs> but I don't think any of us knew each other, really. Uh -uh. I mean, and, yeah. and then we lived together, the three of us for two weeks. <laughs> was I there? No, you weren't that. Oh, no, 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 you weren't there. there. <laughs> yeah, we, that's, that's right, because I, I lived in New York. And so did I. And, uh, and then we just crashed at your place for a while. Perfect. Longer than you probably wanted us to. Yeah. It was pre-reality show, because that would have been a reality show. It would have been a great one. Was there one particular scene filming that stands out for each of you that was, that was memorable for one reason or another? Um, anything in particular that you can Alicia doesn't really remember anything. <laughs> 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 well, she was, like I said before, you literally probably worked every minute of that movie. You know, I don't think you had any, there was no real scene that you weren't in. Yeah. <laughs> There were 64 costume changes for me. So my pre-movie was, um, was costume fittings. And like I said, I, didn't, I had the green t-shirt and the jeans and that's it. So I had no idea why we were doing this. And, <laughs> and then when I saw the movie, I was like, Mona May is a genius. And I understand now why we did that. But I, you know, I was young, so I didn't know. But I, there were so many movies, I mean, m scenes that were wonderful. I mean, the scene... I, the car scene with yeah. you was so ridiculous. Yeah, I remember that um. <laughs> very much so, yeah. Um. <clears throat> I have a career because of it. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> What's happening now? What's happening? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Well, we're going to open it up proposing to, each other. to audience questions, because I know you guys have a ton you want to talk to them about. And while they're getting in line, you guys, everyone in here loves Clueless. They love you guys. What do you guys geek out about? What do you, like, if it's literature, certain type of music, genre of film and, or television? I really want to ask Paul some freaking Avengers Infinity War questions, to be honest with you. I'll be honest. I saw, listen, I saw Paul Red today, and I was like, oh, shit, that's Paul Red! <laughs> Are you getting that reaction a lot lately? Not quite like that. Well, I don't think I, I'm alone. Donald and I, we're not alone when we think you're awesome as Ant-Man. You are Thank you very much. really awesome. Thank you. What do you guys geek out about? Come on, what kind of... I just of told you! Well, okay, okay, Avengers, Paul. What okay, you really quick, because it's like an intimate setting, just tell us about Endgame real quick. Just anything you can. Nobody's listening, it's just between friends. <laughs> I know everything. <laughs> that is so not fair. You know, it was between Josh Brolin and Donald for Thanos. <laughs> it was super close. They went with the guy from Goonies, I get it. Yeah. I get it. 
All right, we're gonna start with our questions over here. Hi. 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 Wow. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like really nervous. I, I get starstruck really easily. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, first off, I think all of you are great. Ant Man is fantastic. Rat Race, I loved. <laughs> uh, what about Donald? He never hears that. I'm gonna be honest with you. Thank you for including Brecken. Which is also the title of my autobiography. <laughs> Did so, you have a question? Yes. Uh, they told me to tell my name first. So my name is Roberto, and I am actually from the west suburbs of Chicago. And uh, yeah, I represent. <laughs> so um, I was actually, this is for Paul. I was wondering, like, what is your like, preparation for Ant-Man? <laughs> like, well, uh, good, good question, Roberto. I, uh, I, I honestly, I had to, um, I changed uh, my diet and I worked out a whole bunch, which was a new thing for me. You went vegan, right? And I went, uh, I went hardcore, uh, yeah, really uh, a lot of vegetables, a lot of um, uh, protein, and then uh, the training, the physical training was uh, major. And I also actually read up on uh, uh, ants. I learned a lot about ants. There are a lot of different kinds. Yeah. Thank you. That was it. <laughs> Thank you so much, So if Paul. you have any ant problems, forward all your emails to Mr. Rudd. Yes, thank you so much for kicking Don't mess off. with them, though. No, no, definitely. By the way, my, you're, you're like my girlfriend's favorite actor in the whole world, so just thank you so much. <laughs> Tell her you. thank you. He's not your favorite actor. Let's be honest. <laughs> he, he's growing on me. Just he's your girlfriend. Me. Just your girlfriend. Ant-Man joke. <laughs> thank I you get so it. much. Hi. We'll go Hi. over here. Hi. Hello. Um, just first and foremost, you guys are all awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, now hearing about all of the roommate stuff, I want all the guys to tell me who was the best roommate and why. Well, they only lived together two weeks. Well, but, I mean, but I, two weeks speaks a lot about a person. I would say Brecken was the best roommate because he let us stay at his house. <laughs> That's a plus. For yes. free. It was an apartment, but yeah. <laughs> Also, I didn't have much choice because Donald's much taller than I am. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Cassandra Carr, and I'm from Anderson, Indiana. And I wanted to, like, first off say I have absolutely loved um, growing up and watching Clueless, but also I love you, man, which is kind of strangely, like... <laughs> My husband and his best friend and I, we base our life off of that movie. <laughs> which is sad <laughs> and hilarious at the same time. It's okay. You're half right. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, but my question is, like, since Clueless has been like a nostalgic like 90s movie, like did you guys grow up with any 90s movie that was nostalgic to you that you like absolutely love or you just have to watch that just brings up those like memories? Like your own classic movie. Yes. Yes, that you affiliate with that time period of your life. Yeah. Right. Any John you said John Hughes, right? I was a huge yeah. fan of John Hughes movies. So like Sixteen Candles, yes. Pretty in Pink. <laughs> Ferris Bueller was a big one, I think. Oh. You said Goonies, too. Goonies was a big one for me. Oh, and Star Wars, dude. Keep it 100. Yeah. The most popular teen movie, Star right. Wars. Like Alicia? The Sound of Music. Sound of Music? <laughs> and the Three Stooges. Like the TV show with the old, you know, the black and white one. I, I was, I don't know what's wrong. I love, you know what though, Sound of Music was like one of those movies every like kid who wanted to be in the business loved yep. and watched. There's so many kids in it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi. Hi there. Uh, Fred from Elgin. Um, I have a question for Brecken and Donald. All right. Paul, Alicia, if you could leave. <laughs> well, I love you guys too. Thank you for No, being no, no, here. no. They get enough. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> would you guys ever be interested in doing a mockumentary on Dijor trying to come back? You know, I, yo, yo, I pitched this to him. He's, you, a lot of you don't know this, but this guy's a phenomenal writer. Uh, he writes, uh, he's a really good writer. Some of your favorite movies, you wouldn't know it, but he's ghostwritten them. Just gonna put it out there. <laughs> Am I lying? Okay. 
And no, I pitched no, it to I'm him. No, I'm very good. I, I pitched it, and he was like, oh, wow, that's really interesting. And then I never heard from him again. No, so. that's not true. In, in reality, I'll give you guys this because it's an intimate gathering. We, uh, <laughs> Sethi and, uh, sorry, Seth Green and I, oh, fuck it, Sethi. And, uh, <laughs> that's Sethi, sweet. Yeah, that's sweet, right? Uh, Deborah Kaplan and Harry Elfont, who wrote Can't Hardly Wait and directed Can't Hardly Wait and Josie and the Pussycats and put us in it. Uh, Sethi, me, Deb and Harry all actually went to Netflix and pitched a du jour type thing yeah. of, hey, we'd love to do a series. We think it'd be really funny, them trying now. Because it was right when the Backstreet Boys were doing their big comeback and they're back. So <laughs> we, we tried all that. All right! Yeah. <laughs> we tried that. So we tried that, but uh, it, didn't, it didn't take, so. So we tried, I apologize. No I, let you, I let you down is what I'm getting at. No, so. they got fake festivals on Netflix. They can always do it now. That's so. true. Thank That's you. True. Yes, you're very welcome. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Danielle from Chicago. And my question is for Paul. What is your secret to not aging? <laughs> Just tell us already. <laughs> I'm 80 years old on the inside. <laughs> it's a mess underneath all, in here and in here, pure darkness. <laughs> People don't know With this. With a little uh, moisturizer. <laughs> on the set of Clueless, they would come and they would get us like 20 minutes before set. And then on Paul's trailer, they would knock like an hour beforehand because he has to finish sucking the lifeblood out of the babies he takes <laughs> in order to maintain. And then, and then he was camera ready. There you have it. Hey, it's a tough business. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hi. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm uh, Brian from Elgin and uh, oh, there's saw another, There's another guy from Elgin. Yeah, how about that? Do you guys uh, know each other? We do not. Did, you could carpool. Yeah. <laughs> So we saw Clueless last week, great movie. Um, but my question is for Paul. <laughs> is that the first time you saw it? Second. You know, <laughs> you know it came out 20 years ago, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> so um, It Paul, was in my queue for a while. <laughs> uh, do you have any stories from when you met Stan Lee or what that was like? Yeah, I mean, uh, that was a real thrill, meeting him and I, I knew him a little bit, and uh, one of the things that I will always treasure was when we were working on the first movie, and he did his cameo, he showed up, and it was like the, you know, like the president showed up. Everyone on the crew got very, uh, we were all kind of uh, starstruck and reverential, and he couldn't have been sweeter to everybody, and then he stayed and was watching a little bit of the scene, and uh, we were sitting and he was telling me how happy he was that Ant-Man was being made into a film and that the thing that made him really excited about it is you were going to be able to really see the scale, the way he imagined it. Because when you do it in the comic books, when you draw it in panels, it's very hard to con really convey uh, the size of something. When you're drawing Ant-Man this big and you're drawing Ant-Man this big, you can't really focus on background that much. So he said, I really think the effect will be what I've always imagined because I've never really seen it the way that I've imagined it. Uh, and it was a really incredible moment. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. I always thought it was A-U-N-T, man. <laughs> That's what I thought the movie was about. But an amazing. the more you know, now you know. It's yeah. kind of like a Mrs. Doubtfire thing. Exactly. <laughs> When they cast you, I was like, perfect. Yeah, yeah of course. Makes sense. Red's hysterical. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Paul from outside of Chicago, not Elgin. Okay, because if you're in city. Elgin, there's a carpool leaving in about 20 minutes. I go past there so I can drop them off. That would be amazing. Guys, love connection. So you're all tremendously talented, and you have an extended body of work outside of Clueless. Donald and Brocken, if you guys want to have an impromptu panel about Can't Hardly Wait. I'd love to hear what you think happened to your characters from the Love Burger Band after that movie. Uh, but my question for everybody is, how often do you guys still get recognized just for being in Clueless? And what are those fan interactions like? What really resonated oh, with the fans? Yo, my nickname, for some reason, for the longest, like people would be like, yo, Clueless! <laughs> Clueless! <laughs> 
so you get recognized right, a, a lot. lot. That was also yep. way before the movie. <laughs> he just wasn't that bright. I toss him up, and he knocks him out of the park. I mean, I, Alicia, I imagine, like, every day, you know? I mean, it's such an iconic character and, and you know, yeah. recognizable character. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And it's perfectly lovely. There's, it's, it, it's, there's nothing, it's, it's nice. People are just, like, really like the movie a lot. So it's nice. <laughs> it's not bad vibes coming at you. No, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It mm -hmm. does feel cool to be uh, in something that uh, is an important movie for a lot of people and grew up watching it. And, you know, we meet people now that say, I grew up loving your film and now I like watch it with my kids, yeah. uh, which makes all of us, especially me, feel really old. But, um, but just three more babies, you suck that that's, life yeah, right yeah, out. Yeah, I, I got one in back. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's really, it's really cool to be a part of something. Uh, and also, I was just so excited to be here just to see you guys. We haven't hung out like this or really been together in, in years. I mean, yeah, not, probably not. Since my birthday, since, which yeah, none of y'all remember. Since, since remember. Six yeah. years ago when he turned 21. Yeah. Well, we thank you guys for coming here, right guys? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, uh, I'm Jessica. I'm from the suburbs. Um, thank you all for, for coming, McDonald, Eagle, and... Uh, What's good? <laughs> and Mr. Paul Rudd, sir. Don't cry. <laughs> don't, cry okay. cause, don't cry, because he also feeds off tears. <laughs> write my question down um if but please just call me sir <laughs> my pleasure <laughs> oh this is taking a turn <laughs> we could we could all leave and just <laughs> let it happen S see me later about the jessica jones ant-man crossover please <laughs> okay um anyway um if Clueless were made today, uh, which social media platform, which we know all of the characters would be on, which, uh, what do you think your character would be famous on? Or what do you think they would use the most? Like Twitter, Instagram, right. Facebook, yeah. Snap, Snapchat. Right. Definitely Instagram, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think Josh yeah. would use something more politically motivated. He yeah. would definitely Josh be on would have Reddit. Some I don't think he'd quite know how to work <laughs> social media. No, yeah. you'd be... You'd be on Reddit. You'd, You'd be like, like Red on Reddit. Yeah. Reddit? Yeah. just on Reddit. Yeah. Some sub. Yeah, yeah. So, that's right. And, He'd and live on Reddit. Yeah. yeah. Tra Travis would be. Travis you know, would just be wondering why no one is on his MySpace page. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> or, or he'd be on Craigslist. Yeah. <laughs> He'd just be on Craigslist selling furniture. Yeah. <laughs> Donald, what do you think? Uh, he'd be on Instagram. He'd, he'd be, be like Instagram famous, man. Definitely. I'd be yeah. like, you know. Uh, one of these rap, the young rappers that are out now, that would be still, you know, <laughs> pushing his record and stuff like that. Hashtag right. keeping it real. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a great question. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi. Da -na 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 -na. Hello. Da -na 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 -na. It's me, Amadio. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm Mia. I'm from Crown Point, Indiana, so it's not that far. Um, my sister is a 90s baby, so she kind of forced me to watch Clueless. Is there a chance that you guys could do like a sequel so I could pos possibly watch it or audition for it? Because I'm an actress too. Well, if there was a sequel, we've already established these two are going to be living happily together. What? So will these. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, anything's possible. I'm sure there's always rumors of, you know, a reboot or a revival, but... I think you guys should go for it. I think it would take Amy Heckerling being involved and then, you know. Thank you for answering that for us, appreciate <laughs> it. What do you think? No, I agree with you 100%. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'm sure at some point they'll attempt a reboot or something with a new cast or something like that, possibly. I think they're doing that with the craft right now. 
I think they're doing a reboot of, I did, hey, look, I didn't do it. Don't get mad at me. I'm just the jackass they tell Oh, that's me. another movie that you were in. Which one? The Craft. Was that? I, I think so. Yeah, I forgot. That's so funny. I forgot about that. That's so funny, on the set of Can't Hardly, um, never mind. Um, Hi, thank you all for coming. Uh, my question is for Paul. Um, everyone's all like, Ant Man this, I love you, man that, but your crowning achievement is clearly Celery Man and Tane. Um, how, how is it uh, making that, and is that why Tim shows up in Ant Man and Wasp? Right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I love Tim and Eric. I was, I mean, a huge Tim and Eric fan uh, before I knew them and, and met them, and, and working on that. Uh, uh, you can, I'm sure there's many people who don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> but uh, if you go sell, if you type in Celery Man, you'll, you'll know. Uh, it was awesome. Uh, it was just super weird and really uh, fun and funny. And it was kind of made up uh, names. And I think it was Tim that just yelled out Celery Man that got me laughing. And Tane and Oyster. It was all, we were all just saying a bunch of stuff as we were doing it. And, uh, and yes. There's also uh, a great thing called uh, On Cinema at the Cinema uh, with Greg Turkington. Mm -hmm. And he, he's in the first uh, Ant-Man, and then we wanted to put Tim in the second one because they do that show together, and there's a real rivalry between the two. So there's, for real comedy nerds, <laughs> you can track that. It's, it's mm -hmm. never in quotes, but I have a feeling you caught it. Yes. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Alicia, you did actually revisit Cher when you did Lip Sync Battle. So what was that like? That was awesome, by the way. Did you guys see that? <laughs> was that fun for you to put on the, the outfit once again? Yes, super fun. But I think what was, I, I, I loved that I didn't have to be Cher. I could be um, Iggy yeah. being Cher, right? Because <laughs> she's, so, she's such a badass, Iggy. Is, it was definitely a new Cher style. Yeah. Yeah, with, the, it, with Iggy's words. Do you know that song? She's like, I'm so fan. Yeah, and she's like, I sh you should, well, I'm a bad, I can't even do it. But something about being a bad bitch. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> so it was really um, fun. That was really awesome to watch. Yeah. I loved and it. You guys, I thought you, well, they told me you guys were going to come, but you didn't come. I wasn't told about <laughs> this. You weren't? I wasn't told about said performance. You, you didn't hear about that? I didn't go. Yeah, you didn't show up. That's what happened. <laughs> they were like, Brecken's gonna be there. My skateboard I broke. I was like, really? I, don't I think couldn't get there. I would have <laughs> totally been there if I would have known. Right? That yeah. that was I forgot down. to give you the message. Yeah. <laughs> That's my bad. Also, they want you. You never want to see me do nothing. I want to see you do amazing stuff. They, want, they wanted you for the Anthony that, Mackie the part. Over, of dude, the bit's over. <laughs> uh, Hi. Hello, I'm Joe from Aurora. Uh, first of all, thank you all so much for being here today. Let so, me guess, for Paul? For all, well, oh. yes, but just for a friend, for a friend, since I didn't get to be here today. Uh, Mr. Rudd, uh, he would like to know what your, just your first reaction was when you got Ant-Man, and uh, who you got to tell first. What my reaction was when I got? The role, yeah, of Ant-Man, yeah. Oh, I was, uh... It was just so unexpected. I never would have imagined that at, at that point that kind of I would be stepping into the MCU, uh, and it was really, it was really super exciting. And you know, when I first started, it was a little crazy because Edgar Wright was on board, and Edgar's a, f a friend of mine. That was the reason I was even got the part. Uh, and um, so I think kind of once the, you know everything kind of equaled out, and uh, I, it, it was amazing, and it has continued to be that. I've really. Uh, valued the experience playing that part and, and working with all of them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi. Hi there. I'm JJ from Downstate Illinois. Um, I have a question for Alicia, but first for the gentleman. Uh, I think I speak for a lot of people in the room that I'd love to be the meat in that Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't get it. I'll show you later. <laughs> he is staying at the Four Seasons, room 325. Shut room up! Room 325 at the Four Seasons Hotel. I'm not fucking around. That's his room. 325 at the Four Seasons Hotel. Thank you. Thank you. He's under the name Faison Love. <laughs> All right, so... I'm not kidding. Oh. 
my husband says that if we ever go to LA that we would be recreating the freeway scene from Clueless because I'm a terrible driver. So um, I just wanted to ask Alicia. Um, I was like, there's a three-way scene in Clueless? <laughs> Kinda. Freeway. It, did, it didn't make the final cut. Okay, perfect. <laughs> perfect. So I just wanted to know what it was like filming it. Oh, it, it was so, there was, I loved playing Cher. It was such a fun character and working with these guys, every one of them was so much fun. And I just think Amy Heckerling's a brilliant genius and that the writing was so interesting and half of the stuff I can't out myself for what I didn't know. You know, when you're talking about the things that you ad-libbed in the movie, I didn't ad-lib, I just didn't know what things meant and that's why they were so funny. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Like the Hadians, right? Wasn't the ha the Haitians? Shh. I'm just saying. It was a character choice. It was totally my brilliant choice. <laughs> and the other one was, um, I think I, there was like, I think there's a word heifer, right? But I think I said it differently. But then she was like, no, we need to fix that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was so much fun. And it was just a, a role that I, I didn't know... I didn't know who that girl was, so it was really fun to be her because it wasn't like how I, how I lived my life. Thank that you. Day, that day was crazy. I remember that day. We yeah. were in uh, Long Beach. <laughs> I, I do remember this day. It was, uh, and uh, I remember it. You're going to think I'm an idiot, but shut up. Um, <laughs> but it was, that, w that was the day I knew I, I got to kiss Stacey Dash that day. You know what I mean? Aww. And, uh, and so I had prepared myself to, I, was, I wanted to make sure I did the best I could for that scene <laughs> because I thought that would be, oh wow, you know, maybe Stacy will kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be so impressed with yeah. your performance. I know, right. And uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun shooting it. I think we shot by the, by the aquarium. If you ever want to do it, there's an aquarium in Long Beach and there's a little tiny road, and if you ever really want to go with your husband and do the freeway scene, that's where you go. It's the Aquarium of the Pacific, and right next to it is this nice little freeway, and you can, and you can do it. <laughs> For anybody out there that wants to recreate Badly. the freeway scene. Wait, you said freeway? <laughs> I thought you said three-way. We can talk afterwards, too. I would love to. <laughs> I'm Thank on my you. way to Elgin, so if you can join me. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi. You look great. Thank you. My name is Monica. I'm from the South Side of Chicago. And, um, no, your name is Dion, girl. Or Dion, yeah. <laughs> you jeeping behind my back, girl? <laughs> so I'm a huge Emma fan, Jane Austen fan. And one of the thing, that was one of the things I loved about Clueless. And I was wondering for each of you if there was a book or a comic book that you can turn into a teen movie, probably today, what would it be? If you could turn a book or a comic book into a teen movie today? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Let's start with you. What would yours be? Oh, gosh. That's a good question. <laughs> See, you thought of this question, but you didn't have your answer? You're like, that's a good question. You said that's a good question. You were complimenting your own question. <laughs> It is a good question. It really is. Well done, you. <laughs> Thank you. Let's all hear it for the question. Does anyone want to take a stab at that answer? V.C. Andrews books. They did do a mini series of those. Did they? Like a little, yes. I loved them so much when I was little. Flowers in the Attic. All of them. Yes. They, like, there's a there's this whole series of them, and they're so, in I mean, when you're 12, they're amazing. They were amazing. I totally agree <laughs> with you. I think for me, it'd probably be um, Harry Potter. <laughs> Agreed. I don't know if you guys have read these books, but if you haven't, <laughs> check them out. They're called Harry Potter. It's about a, this uh, magician. I don't know about a movie. They're doing it now as a TV show on the CW Riverdale, which is based yes. on yeah, yes. which is based on the Bible. So <laughs> I was going to say the Bible, but they're already doing it with Riverdale. I'm not a strong reader. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and you do look great. 
Hi. Hey, uh, Miss Geist here. Um, I just wanted to know if you guys signed up for the envir environmental fair yet. <laughs> that In was there. there. No? <laughs> That was it. <laughs> you did a good job. Awesome. Hi. Awesome. Hello. Hi. I'm Megan from Chicago. Hi, um, Megan. I'm Brecken. This is Donald. That's Paul. That's Alicia. That's Claire. Hi. 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 Um, love the movie. It's burned through three cassettes of the soundtrack. So. Um, my question actually is, do you guys have any good stories of your time with Wallace Shawn slash Mr. Hall? Man. He's amazing. Uh, so after we did Clueless, the movie, we went on to do, uh, myself only on the stage, went on to do Clueless, the television show, and Wallace Shawn did that as well, right? <laughs> These two guest starred. Yep. Guest starred. Yep. Um, and one day I was, you know, messing around on set, and <laughs> I had done a movie with Ed Asner that never came out, like, a year before that, and him and Wallace Shawn were friends. And I was messing around on set, and I couldn't remember my lines. And Wallace Shawn said, you know, Donald, it's really interesting. Ed Asner had so many high things to say about you. And I'm having a hard time believing you can't get your lines right right now. And I was like, oh? Uh, he's a lovely man. <laughs> but he's one of those cats that, you know, he. I, it, that kind of turned the corner for me because I didn't necessarily want to be the guy that was known for not knowing his lines and stuff like that. And he kind of woke me up to the fact that I needed to be a little bit more professional when I came to work. Uh, and it wasn't a, it wasn't a game, it, it was a job. And so I'll always remember him for that. It took you 10 years to realize you should learn your lines? <laughs> just throwing it out there. I'm just running up the flagpole, see if you salute. I'm just wondering. I'm just seeing if you're reading my mail. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Chrissy from Schaumburg. Um, <gasps> shout out to Bobby Newport. Um, <laughs> <laughs> funny guys. I agree with that 100%. <laughs> He's the best. I, in my undergrad, wrote a serious academic paper arguing that Clueless is the best adaptation of Jane Austen's Emma. And I truly believe that because you show her transformation better than anybody has ever done on screen. Yeah, really suck do. it, Paltrow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, has, has Jane Austen influenced your performance in Clueless in any way for all of the characters? For all of you? Yeah, what did you take from the classic and bring into, was it the tonality mostly, or were there specific traits that you tried to implement? Once again, sadly, I had not read the book prior Ooh. to doing the play, uh, the show. Ooh. But I read it after. Hey, now. Oh, good. And when I read it, I was really blown away by the adaptation. Yes! <laughs> I mean, yes. it was really remarkable. You mm -hmm. know, especially the character of, um, who does Justin play? Bre Bre What's the guy who comes... Justin, he comes in and he's like... Christian. 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 Elton, Christian. that was Jeremy's sister. So Chris, the, the role of Chris, that, that part and mm -hmm. how she... I just thought she did such a brilliant adaptation. So yeah. I, I, yes, I figured it out afterwards. So I didn't, <laughs> I didn't... I mean, I knew it was. I just didn't... But, you know, you just make your yeah. characters out of the, the words on the page. I didn't yeah. feel like I needed to research it oh. at the time. <laughs> it's okay. Donald didn't learn his lines. Yeah, <laughs> Donald didn't learn his line, so don't even worry about it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Uh, my name is Lauren, and I'm from Chicago. Um, Welcome home. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, obviously, your characters were about 16 years old. I know, Paul, you were a little older, older with your character. How would you describe yourself when you were, like, 16? Ooh, looking back to your teenage years. I was a poser. I wanted to be uh, in New Edition or Belle Bib DeVoe when I was 16 years old. Very nice. More than anything, you know, I, I, that was, that was, you know. So I, if you looked at my uh, high school yearbooks, I have ridiculous clothes on, like, you know, backwards <laughs> overalls and. 
So you were cool. You were really cool. No, I wasn't cool. I was <laughs> posing. I wish I was cool. Brecken? Uh, I, at 16, I was, uh, yeah, I was pretty stupid. Um, <laughs> not much has changed, but uh, I was literally, I mean, I, I think I was just, I was skateboarding everywhere. I didn't have a lot of money for gas, so I would use my skateboard a lot. I actually skateboarded to the audition of Clueless. Which is really, if you know Los Angeles, I lived in North Hollywood, and it was in Paramount, which is very, very far away. It's not a safe place to skateboard, because you're, at some point, there's a freeway. <laughs> and so I skated to my audition for Clueless. But, uh, yeah, at 16, I was just a stupid, greasy jackalope. <laughs> not much is different. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think at 16, I really loved comedy. I loved comedians. I loved David Letterman, uh, and I, I loved uh, synth pop music. Like I liked <laughs> really into Depeche Mode and uh, and all like new wave. I was living in Kansas City, and uh, and I was really into wearing uh, fashionable clothing, and uh, or so I thought. And um, and I had a I had a sticker that said "Why be normal," and I thought I'm gonna. I'm going to put this on our car, but I'm going to put it upside down. <laughs> yeah, you did. And I'm like, brilliant. This is... <laughs> and that was me at 16. Very nice. <laughs> That's awesome. I was shooting The Crush and the Aerosmith videos and um, some other things. <laughs> some other things at that time. So I don't know what I was like because I was like working all the time. But I think I was pretty much the same, I think, if you guys knew me back then. We all, we all would have loved to have known you back then. We, you, you would not have talked to us back then. We were, you were, well, we were <laughs> by the way, right after that. Yeah, because we went to high school and never met. What? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we went to high school at the same time? Where did you go to high school? Yeah, there you go. Beverly Hills High, but yeah. only for half, uh, only for that first, that's one semester. Yeah, I went to Beverly, I lied about my address. You have to live in Beverly Hills to go to Beverly Hills High School. We didn't, so we lied. And I never knew you. Yeah. And you would have never spoken to me. <laughs> Are we the same age? I don't know, you say it weird. You say it like it's an accusation. <laughs> no, no it's just that you like look so old. old. I was about to say, I'm like you Yoda. Look so old. So, no, I think I'm a little older than you. But we, it's funny, uh, you asked about, not you, but before, about Wallace Shawn. My drama teacher at Beverly High was named Mr. Hall. And Amy went to Beverly and met all these cool kids, not me, when she was researching the role. And she met Mr. Hall and named the character after him. Um, and he was actually my drama teacher. Very different fellow than Wallace Shawn. But um, there's a little morsel for you. He's the science teacher? He's the No, he was the drama teacher. I think. Oh, great. Yeah, he was yeah. the drama teacher, Mr. Hall. I'm confused. I'm okay, confused. thank you. Thank you. No, but sorry. It, I think I read that the real Mr. Hall played the prin played. Oh, that's the right. Principal. The real Mr. Hall played the yeah. principal, who said, in who introduces Clueless. Ty, I believe, a who introduced cameo. Brittany to the group. Like this is a new student, Ty, <laughs> the real Mr. Hall. Hi. Hi. Um, I was actually 15 when this movie came out, and it. I think I saw it three times in the theater, and when I went to go rent it from Hollywood Video, they were out. So, <laughs> um, but it was a really great movie when you're trying to figure out how to be cool and kind. So thank you for the movie. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, mostly Alicia, what was it like to work with Brittany Murphy? Are you cosplaying as Ty? I am. Yes, you great. Looks I didn't great. make it up there, though. <laughs> One Wait, of my can you come here? Because I can't see it very well, and I want to see Britt's outfit. You have Marvin the Martian. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Amazing. That's lovely. You look great. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> One of my favorite mo Well, I saw Brittany Murphy's audition. That was incredible. Like, I remember just being blown away by what she did in that room and, like, thinking I had a... You know, I had to tell Amy just in case she didn't know that, that Brittany Murphy was the one that had to play the part, you know? And I'm sure they figured that out on their own. But, um, <laughs> but she was so good. And then I love the scene, I love when she says, you're a virgin who can't drive. 
It's just one of my favorite moments of the whole movie. It's just her face. You know, she gets all... <laughs> and it's just so good. So she was lovely. She was really lovely to work with. Yeah. Thank you. She Hi. was the sweetest person, too. She was. We'd, we'd all run, run at her, and uh, she was just always so smiley and sweet. Yeah. And ridiculously talented. Like, you see Ty, and then you watch 8 Mile. <laughs> And you're like, that's the same person. And we did, Britt and I did King of the Hill together. And she is, I mean, she was the original Joseph, which is this, if you go back and listen to the original Joseph, it's the strangest character in the world. And it's Brittany. I mean, she came up with this insane voice. It, she's so, she was so incredibly talented. She could sing, she could dance. She, you know, she was, yeah, she's, yeah. She's like a pretty Donald. She's like a really pretty Donald Faison. That's how I describe Brittany. Because you can sing and dance. No, I'm saying that in a good way. No, I totally... Okay. I'm just saying. Hi. Hi, my name yeah, is... We'll Pen be definitely going to talk about this later. <laughs> Hi, my name is Penelope, and I'm originally from Southern California. Um, how did you guys feel portraying, you know, people from Cal California? I'm really nervous. I'm so sorry. You're okay. Oh, you're doing great. <laughs> because you're doing I grew right. up in LA and I love how you guys portrayed um, our kind, I guess, um, Californians. How do you, how did you like portraying them? <laughs> yeah, how did you like playing, you know, Beverly Hills, Southern California kids? You guys, you were from New York, you said? Originally, but I moved around when I was a little a lot. And I actually lived in Southern California before I moved to Kansas City. Uh, as a kid, I've been mean, California. I was pretty familiar with it, but uh, for me, I was just uh, oh, I'm I'm the outlier here. I was really more thinking in terms of college freshmen and somebody who would be really idealistic and involved in the uh, environment. I had a friend that was studying environmental law, so I thought, oh, I want to make he should be studying environmental law, not just law, like <laughs> you know, a real cause-oriented guy. So yeah, and then I just raided my own wardrobe collection. <laughs> Anyone else have any? Uh, my, I, I knew a lot of those skater kids like that and those stoner guys. And so for me, again, other than Spicoli and stealing from Keanu Reeves, it was these skater kids. Like, it was funny thing, it was at Beverly, they had those kids, but it was all kind of like they were, they were fronting. Like it was, it was, they were posers because they were these kids on skateboard and stuff, but then they'd skate to their BMW and drive home. <laughs> And it was fantastic. I was like, oh, you guys are so full of shit. This is fantastic. <laughs> but a lot of it was Amy. Amy did so much research and brought so much to us where she was like, here's who this guy is. And it just it gave so much help with creating the character. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. My name is Angela from, originally from Columbia, the country, not the district. Um, I guess my question is for all of you guys. What kind of students were you in school? What kind of, <laughs> were, what, were you a nerd, marching band? I'm, I'm sure theater geeks, but, and if you didn't have a traditional schooling, what would you have been or wanted to be? So what, what group did they hang with or yes. affiliate with? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I went to a school with a bunch of working actors and musicians and stuff like that. Uh, no, it wasn't the fame school. It was called the Professional Children's School. Uh, I know, um, <laughs> and uh, I didn't work the whole time I was in school. Uh, that didn't make me not popular or anything like that, uh, but yeah. What was the question again? <laughs> Do you? I was, I was, I was, I don't know, I don't know, I was a horrible student, I could tell you that. I was a very bad student. Donald drank his breakfast this morning, yeah. so <laughs> give him a little leave. Dude. Enough! <laughs> I was with my girlfriends a few weekends ago telling them that I didn't think that maybe I was uh, the best student and I was really happy. She said, what are you talking about? You were one of the best students in school. And I was like, for reals? <laughs> like, what does that mean? She said, because the, the year that I left to go do acting, I left San Francisco to go up uh, to, to go down to Los Angeles. 
that year I had, a, that semester, I had a really bad year because I was flying back and forth. And so that's what I remember is like my C's that I had to kind of beg for because I was going back and forth. And um, anyway, they reminded me that prior to that, I had really great grades. So I was really happy to hear that. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we have time for one more question over here. Hi. Hello there, Josh from the uh, Chicago suburbs. Paul, really quick, I want to give you a shout out. Mr. Anderson, perks of being a wallflower. I had the exact same kind of English teacher in high school, just a lovely man, made a profound impact on my life, always encouraged me to go the distance. My question for all of you, if you could go back to when you were making Clueless all those years ago and impart wisdom from now, what wisdom would you give to your younger selves? I know what I, I know, actually I have an answer for that. When I, uh, when I, go to the kitchen and I make this sandwich, I would put the mayonnaise on the bread <laughs> and not on directly onto the turkey itself. <laughs> the, a little thing about me is I hate mayonnaise and I hate condiments. And uh, they skeeve me out, so I'd never had mayonnaise on a sandwich. And I was so nervous with the timing of the scene that I just, I think I just put the mayonnaise right on the turkey and now when I see that scene, it's like nails on a chalkboard. That is the most awesome answer I Such think you could have expected. Such a <laughs> Thank you so much. You guys, have you guys had a great time? One more big round of applause for the cast of Coolest, Brecken, Donald, Paul, and